Let's head into our top story this morning and focus on the health of the U.S. president. The U.S. president has returned to the White House as of Monday and posted a video message on his social media. Upon reaching the White House, he removed his mask and posed for pictures, waving, saluting and giving a thumbs up. I just left Walter Reed Medical Center, and it's really something very special. The doctors, the nurses, the first responders, and I learned so much about coronavirus. And one thing that's for certain, don't let it dominate you. Don't be afraid of it. You're going to beat it. We have the best medical equipment. We have the best medicines, all developed recently. And you're going to beat it. I went. I didn't feel so good. And two days ago, I could have left two days ago. Two days ago, I felt great, like better than I have in a long time. I said just recently, better than 20 years ago. Don't let it dominate. Don't let it take over your lives. Don't let that happen. We have the greatest country in the world. We're going back. We're going back to work. We're going to be out front. As your leader, I had to do that. I knew there's danger to it, but I had to do it. I stood out front. I led. Nobody that's a leader would not do what I did. And I know there's a risk, there's a danger, but that's okay. And now I'm better, and maybe I'm immune, I don't know. But don't let it dominate your lives. Get out there, be careful. We have the best medicines in the world, and it all happened very shortly, and they're all getting approved, and the vaccines are coming momentarily. Thank you very much, and Walter Reed, what a group of people. Thank you very much. Now, for more insights about the U.S. president's rather grand return to the White House, we are now being joined live by Jagrati Dave from Washington, D.C. Thanks for joining us, Jagrati. Now, tell us, what do experts and critics make of Trump's recent video message where he revo removed his face mask and told the people not to fear COVID-19 at a time when the U.S. remains the worst affected country with more than 7.6 million COVID cases? Yes, it is really rather extraordinary to see the president who has um, left Walter Reed Hospital. He has the coronavirus. He uh, was wearing a mask when he left Walter Reed. He gave a uh, pump, pumped his fist to, uh, to reporters as he left. Uh, he arrived in Marine One on the South Lawn and he walked up the steps to the entrance and he took his mask off, turned around for that photo opportunity, um, which then uh, got made into a very quick campaign video, as you saw just there. And, you know, Look, doctors have said that the president has met or exceeded all standard hospital discharge criteria. Um, but critics are saying that, well, not only is he still, uh, does, is, does he still have the coronavirus, um, his, it's, it's uncertain sort of what stage he's at in it. You know, there, there's still so many unknowns about the severity of the president's condition. And right. he's going back to a White House, which itself has been beset by, uh, by uh, um, infections, and not least amongst close aides such as his own press secretary Kayleigh McEnany who are who is now quarantining so this is um, some critics will say that this is a president who has not uh, who is not changing from his standard messaging that he is presenting himself as a strong president who has overcome coronavirus victorious right. over coronavirus you know others will say that well the president from previous videos has said he's learned a lot about coronavirus perhaps he might um, later down the line change uh, some of that uh, language about coronavirus coronavirus and sort of urge more people to wear masks. He is taking, telling people to take care. But you know, as we heard from there, he is not, there is, doesn't really seem to be much difference from how he spoke about the virus, about the pandemic before. And so, as I say, many questions still to be answered, which uh, health professionals are not uh, yielding those answers as to, you know, what exactly, how severe the president was when he was in Walter Reed. Right. Now, political pundits say that this photo op was a remarkable attempt to convert his still ongoing disease into a show of strength, even as more than 200,000 Americans have died of COVID-19. So how is this overture being perceived before the U.S. election? 
Yes, as, as, as we've just talked about, this is clearly um, a show of strength from the president um, that he has overcome the coronavirus, that it is um, the, the show of, uh, you know, the, the way he talked about um, leaders taking, uh, t- going, taking the front line. Um, you know, this is, it, it, he's presented this as a war against the coronavirus, the invisible enemy, as he said so many times, mm-hmm. and he has emerged victorious. And this is a president who's not been on the campaign trail because of his um, condition. And so he, he thrives on those face-to-face interaction, those personal, those rallies, those face-to-face rallies, which have been criticised for their lack of social distancing and a very little mask wearing that has been taking place. And many of those events that the president has held have been scrutinised now um, uh, because as potential um, places where the coronavirus could have spread, notably um, the event he held where he introduced his Supreme Court nominee uh, in the White House Rose Garden uh, the last weekend. Um, very few people wearing face masks and very few, very little social distancing happening. But he's not really been able to now do that because he has tested positive. His rival, on the other hand, has been out campaigning. um, And he's been, Joe Biden has been in Florida. Mm-hmm. He's due to go to Pennsylvania. He has been doing well nationally in the polls. Uh, recent polls suggest that uh, Joe Biden's lead has been extended. So this is an, a president who is attempting to catch up and you know, double down on that show of strength as a result of his, um, of, of his diagnosis. Right. Uh, a few other things that stood out in that video message that we just played out for our viewers. Of course, the president praised the U.S.'s health infrastructure and also said that a vaccine against COVID-19 will be available momentarily. Now, does the president's statement have any evidence backing it because as we know the global race for a vaccine against COVID-19 is on but it seems that a viable vaccine won't be available by next year at least. Yes, that is um, the latest that uh, we have heard that um, uh, a, a vaccine uh, will uh, is likely to be available sort of at the beginning of uh, the, you know the, the beginning of uh, next year, um, likely available to the large part of the general public in the third quarter of next year, according to um, the CDC. So it's um, but you know there, some doctors have suggested that you know early testing could yield earlier results. But, you know, the president has very much been pushing um, for a vaccine. He had originally been pushing it um, uh, to say that it would arrive before the election, which many doctors disputed that uh, vaccine would be available that early. Right. Uh, Just before we wrap up our discussion here, can you give us a health update on the U.S. president? How is he faring as of now? Will he be isolating? And what is the status of the upcoming debate between the two candidates? So according to the CDC, anyone who's tested positive for coronavirus needs to uh, isolate until they meet certain criteria, one of those being um, being away from people for at least 10 days from the onset of symptoms. And so, um, you know, according to those guidelines, the president should be isolating. Again, we haven't been given clear information as to exactly what the president will be doing and where he will be isolating, what parts of the White House he will be confined to. A White House statement says that his... um, uh, the people exposed to the president will be significantly limited. Um, his schedule uh, as of the next day um, says that he has no uh, events uh, scheduled, which is um, you know, unusual during a campaign, you know, less than 30 days to the general election. Um, you know, we have the vice presidential debates that are scheduled, that are due to go on uh, as, as expected, or the Democrats are clearly concerned by uh, the um, outbreak in the White House and mm-hmm. the president's outbreak, the, the, the president's p- positive test. Right. They have asked for um, the vice president, Mike Pence and Kamala Harris to be not only uh, separated by a greater distance around 12 feet, but also there's going to be plexiglass um, put in between the two of them and between them and the moderator for additional safety, something the debate commission has agreed to, that this was something that um, Kate Miller, the spokesperson mm-hmm. for the vice president, sort of dis- said that you know, if Kamala Harris wants to be surrounded by a fortress than have at it. Um, mm-hmm. So these are, there are concerns about these, but as far as we know, the vice presidential debate will go ahead. It's unclear as to whether the next presidential debate can go ahead in person given uh, the president's um, d- uh, positive test. We don't know, you know how his health will continue over the next few days, so that is remaining to be seen. Right. All right, Jagrati, thank you so much for all your inputs on this story and thank you for joining us on this broadcast.